Hi there. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about an add-on I've been developing in my free time. Um, it's at a state where it works sort of well enough, um, so I figured I would already release it if people want to play around with it. It's called Random Mesh, and basically what it does, as you can see from the image here, it gives you a couple of controls, and it's an add-on to add sort of randomized geometry to pretty much any mesh uh, in Blender. Um, to install it, like most other add-ons, you can just download the zip, and then once you have the zip downloaded, you can install it here in the preferences. So um, you just hit install and select the zip file. I'm not going to do that because I already have it installed. <clears throat> but the interesting thing is that um, it has a little warning to it. And the reason it's in there is I'll read it to you um, right now. The add-on can be slow and use a lot of RAM. Keep an eye on your system resources with high numbers of iterations. So that'll become clear once I start explaining how it works. But um, it's good to know that random mesh is right now meant to work on um, meshes that don't have an extremely high amount of polygons. So up to about 5,000 polygons, say between 2,000 and 500, uh, 5,000, I found the best results. But um, I've started Blender from a terminal here so you can see the output and I can explain what's going on in the add-on. So I have a very basic scene right now. We're playing with some subdivisions. And once random mesh is loaded, you can hit the N key and you'll find it in one of the panels on the side. Now, by default, all of this stuff is enabled. Um, but right now, I want to show you exactly what it does. So I'm going to disable most things. and I'm going to keep this, um, keep original mesh and leave that on. And then I'm going to leave the default operation mode to edges and uh, leave these iterations to default as well. So one of the things uh, it actually does, so like I said earlier, random mesh is actually an iterative add-on. So that means it does um, multiple operations like iteratively. Um, and by that, what I mean is, let's say we leave this to Vive and I'm just gonna destroy that mesh so I can explain it a little bit better. Um, right now, what it does is it will make random selections on your mesh and then subdivide them. So this creates sort of interesting looking patterns, um, you know, all kinds of things with it. But uh, for now, it's good to know that the amount of iterations controls the amount of times it will make a random selection and then subdivide it down. So I'm going to delete this. And with keep original mesh on, it just makes a duplicate uh, of the mesh before it does anything to it. It will collapse like all your modifiers, like apply all your modifiers and things. So it is quite um, important that you do keep the original if you want to try multiple times, otherwise you might throw it out. So. Um, same, let's say I up the iterations to 10 now and hit destroy that mesh. What you'll see is the output here. So this is actually the first time around where we did um, five iterations. It took less than a second. You'll see how long it takes for each second. And um, this one now took 11 seconds. So the moment you up the iterations and you can see sort of every time it has to do more selections and it's subdivided a couple times, you'll have more polygons. So it does get a little bit slower. Um, so it, this took about 11 seconds for the whole thing. And we'll get into what these things mean a little bit later. But for now, it's good to know. I'm going to turn off the original plane. You can see it did sort of a random thing and uh, it makes interesting looking patterns and selections that you can then do stuff with if you wanted to. Um, I've created a couple of artworks which are interesting, which I might show at the end uh, just to give you an idea of what I've been doing with it. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun basically. Now there is more to it than uh, just those options and I want to run through them very quickly. So the first one is the random extrusion and I'm going to turn the iterations down and we'll come back to the subdivision smoothing in a little bit. Um, so the first thing is the number of iterations, obviously, and then the mode here, uh, basically if it's going to operate on vertices, edges, and faces. The um, variations in look are very different, are very slight, but you might be able to mess around with these and get interesting results as well. I left it in there so people have some controls to play with most of it, um, mostly. So extrude random over here is, I'm just going to crank this up. Um, just so you can kind of see what's going on. So in every iteration now, because remember everything that's under the iteration options will have a chance to happen every iteration. Basically what we're telling uh, Random Mesh is, all right, I want to do random extrusions based on those random selections we've made. So I'm just going to hit the button. And what you'll see now is, uh, I'm going to turn off the wireframes real quick. It has made these sort of random extrusions and you can get some really interesting looking patterns. Now, it's never going to be perfect because I'm working with those um, very random selections. So you'll get edges being selected of extruded parts that have already been extruded. 
Um, and it'll be a little wonky, but I don't really mind that. Uh, obviously, I have a very specific style, I guess. Um, but for most people, I think it'll still be useful. If you want to overdo that, for example, uh, let's go back in here. Do minus one and one. It'll probably go completely loopy. Hopefully it doesn't crash, but we'll see. There we go. You get really extreme results because the uh, extrusion is happening at a very high rate. And um, while it looks generally, that's why it's set to a very low value because it looks interesting when you get sort of a little bit more armor plating looking thing or just a little bit of extra, um, I guess a little bit extra topology or something you can do with uh, that, that looks nice or that catches the light. So this is okay, but not really um, what I wanna do. Uh, I wanna move on maybe to sort of a little bit more interesting um, shape in a second, but I'm gonna turn off the extrusion for now and then turn on the poking and triangulation. So what this, do, what this will do is every iteration, there's an option to either poke or triangulate um, during that iteration and if you look at the output here you'll see basically what happens is the first iteration in this one just to give an example um, i selected a couple of random points i grew them out 10 times i shrank them once and then um, the extrusion value is minus point zero 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 one and then the p is for poking and that's false and triangulation is also false so i hadn't had those enabled for now but when i do uh, if we hit destroy that mesh again what you'll see is um, in the very in some of these so these have randomly had their faces poked um, four times out of five iterations so that might just happen uh, if we go back to another one let's say we'll do seven iterations for this one it takes a little bit longer we look at it again and here for the first one it did some triangulation for the second one it didn't do anything for the third one it triangulated for the fourth one it poked for the fifth one it poked for the sixth one it didn't do anything and then for the seventh one it poked again and that's what you see here as well so triangulation is going to give you um, these interesting cross sections and then when those meshes get poked as well you'll get some interesting looking patterns so it's one way to add more to the pattern that's already there so let's uh, push our luck here and do one with 10 subdivisions just to see what happens and hit destroy that mesh. And you can see this one always takes a little bit longer. So this took 4.8 seconds. And rather than having just the uh, straight sort of patterns that we had before without the poking and the triangulations, we now get these sort of weird, um, I guess, angular looking patterns. And again, they're random. So, you know, it's just all about having fun. and. It's called random mesh for a good reason. Um, the results are still very hard to predict. It's all just based on a technique that I've been developing for a while that I do by hand, and I just wanted to put it into a um, an add-on. So let's see what happens when you turn everything back on. Um, um, I believe that's what it was set to, or it's 0 0.01 and 0, 0, 001, that's it. So we'll go back. And then for this one, I'm gonna turn the iterations down a little bit again. I'm gonna turn off poking and triangulation, and actually I'm gonna turn off extrude random, and I'm just gonna very quickly uh, explain the different post effects. So the decimation at the very end, what's gonna happen is it's gonna try and make a selection and decimate it. So it creates an internal vertex group, vertex weight, um, and then it's just gonna use a decimate operator to kind of make the uh, break up the pattern a little bit so here we have those um, very angular straight patterns that we had before only now you'll see some mesh decimation has happened and uh, if you want to double check i'll show you here real quick if we go to properties and you'll see there's a vertex group now and that's actually what it's based on so if you were to go into the weight pane mode you'll see that vertex groups actually exist so you'll see um, exactly what happened. It randomly decimated stuff within that vertex group and um, it's just a, a more interesting way of, uh, of doing things. So this adds a little bit of randomness to it towards the end. Uh, the reason it's in the post effects section is because it does it only once. It's not an iterative process. It's just a singular one. So I'm going to collapse this down again. Um, and yeah, then let's go back to our plane. Same with the smoothing. Now the smoothing can get fairly slow, and I'm gonna do it again just to see if we can get one that has a little bit more going on. 
there we go so this is what i wanted to show you smoothing is actually one of the slower ones in there um you'll see the smoothing step itself took seven and a half seconds but everything else it was nine seconds in total don't know if we'll be able to see it yeah so what smoothing does it sort of gives it a more kind of organic look um by smoothing out certain parts of the mesh uh, again it happens randomly so uh, you can get some interesting effects and then for the final uh, post effect is basically it will generate you a second mesh with a random wireframe so i'm going to turn off my original mesh here and what you'll see is i have this wireframe mesh that uh, it created as well as just the regular mesh um, with the thing now the reason this is a separate post effect is if you just want a wireframe that you can control, you can always put on a wireframe modifier uh, instead. But um, if I would, were to do this with modifiers, it would be a little bit slower because I have to set, put the modifier on it and then set it, which uh, it basically twice as slow because I can pass all the values to the regular wireframe operator now instead. Um, and if that doesn't make sense, I've been getting into developing these these uh, add-ons, so I've been starting to learn about how Blender works in the background. So don't worry about it too much. Um, then final thing which I'm gonna show is here we have uh, sort of a similar looking mesh as what's in the documentation on GitHub. And I just wanna show you what happens um, when you mess with the subdivision smoothing over here. So I'm gonna put in just five iterations to keep it quick. And I'm gonna destroy that mesh. Oh, let's see, I think it might be I still had the uh, wrong object selected. So if you have an object selected that isn't visible, it will give you an error. Um, don't worry about it. It's just down to selecting the mesh. That's weird. Am I in edit mode? No. Well, it wouldn't be a demo if something didn't go wrong. Let's just try it again. Okay, that's all right. Might be a bug I'll, uh, I'll have to look into. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm not very good at uh, creating the add-on yet. So it might just be something random. Just gonna close it real quick. I'll have a look at it at a later date. Most of the time I don't really have any issues, but there you go. If you just restart, you should be fine for the most part. So um, it saves all those uh, parameters as well. So now if I hit destroy that mesh, it just work fine. Um, there we go. And if I turn off the wireframe, what I wanted to show you now is without subdivision smoothing, it's gonna make um, sort of flat subdivisions on the uh, polygons themselves. So that means that this actually hasn't been smoothed. And you can see that, that each polygon has been sort of subdivided in a flat way. So to remedy that, I put in the uh, subdiv smooth control so if we turn it up to one, then it will actually subdivide smooth rather than flat. And if we run it again, you'll see now it will follow the uh, the mesh itself and you get those interesting patterns. And they're nice and smooth because this is a more organic shape and not just a flat or a more like technical looking hard angled shape and it looks a little bit better. So um, just to do one final one to give you an idea of um, the speed of random mesh, it can get fairly slow if you do a lot of iterations. So let's do eight. I'm gonna turn on the extrusion, poking, triangulation, decimating, and smoothing. Um, that last one is the smoothing is a, the slowest step. But then you get an idea of how long it can take. So I'm just gonna hit destroy that mesh and let it run. So now you see, first it runs through all the iterations, iteration one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now it's gonna start doing the decimation and smoothing. And then we'll see a final result with everything uh, enabled. So let it run and this can take up to 20 30 seconds so if you're using it without opening it from a terminal unfortunately you can't see this feedback but just know it's working in the background also i'm at about six gigabytes of ram right now and it's really uh pushing one core so most computers shouldn't have too many issues but i would recommend having like six to eight gigabytes of ram minimum um, if you want to do this on meshes like these so you can see it's still taking a while this is not uncommon um, I found that the decimation and smoothing, the uh, the post effects can be some of the slowest ones. Which is why I recommend using it uh, with a uh, terminal in the first place. You can actually see what's going on. So let's let it run. Okay, so I ended up cutting there. And as you can see, it took about 132 seconds in total. 
So this is a more extreme example, but you can see what it did to the mesh. And um, yeah, this is gonna be very random every single time. So sometimes you get uh, iterations with very little selection and they'll be really quick. And um, let me see if I can do a second run. And I'm just gonna cut it out again if it takes too long, um, just to, so you get an idea of all the differences and how random it actually can be. So I'm gonna leave the settings exactly the same, hit destroy that mesh, and um, yeah, we'll see. This is probably gonna be an extremely long one. It might even crash, but yeah. Like I said, I'm still getting better at Python as I'm learning, so um, I hope to improve some of this stuff in the future. But it's a fun tool to play with nonetheless. So we'll let it run and uh, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so this one took about 70 seconds to run. And um, again, I'm just gonna show you. And let's see if we can grab the other one as well. I'm gonna hide the original. Um, move this one over a little bit. There we go. And as you can see with the same settings, we get a somewhat different result. Um, but that's kind of the point of the add-on. Sometimes you hit the jackpot and sometimes you have to try a couple of times. Um, generally, I'll try different things, but uh, let's see if we can quickly show some projects. Are they still on here? Yeah, so this is a good example. Some of the stuff that I've been doing with it. Um, just as a final thing. So these are just multiple layers of random mesh. So this was a very basic shape that I modeled with some simple subdivisions. And then I copied it a few times and ran random mesh over it. Same with this one and the third one. Um, so you can do fun stuff with it. You, can't, you don't have to just do all those people with it that I keep doing. Um, but yeah, you can get some intricate results once you start combining multiple meshes at the one render. And um, I think that's about it for now. If you have any questions, uh, just find me on social media or whatever. And if you make something cool with it, um, yeah, share the results. I'd be uh, interested to see what you make with it. That's it for me this time around. And uh, thanks for watching. See you later.